Blue Origin has just unveiled their proposal for a Mars telecommunications orbiter, joining fellow aerospace companies Rocket Lab and Lockheed Martin, but not SpaceX. Let's dive into what on earth a Mars telecommunications orbiter is and why SpaceX, at least so far, hasn't shown any intention of building one. Recently, you may have seen a number of proposals being released for a satellite of this type, and it all stemmed from the US president's so-called Big Beautiful Bill. This is a budget reconciliation, which allocated $700 million towards the development of a Mars telecommunications orbiter, a satellite in Mars orbit which would provide a communications link between Earth and the Red Planet. This isn't exactly a brand new idea though. The original MTO, scheduled to launch in 2009, would have been providing interplanetary internet for the past 15 years. However, that project was cancelled in 2005 in favour of more funding for other Mars missions such as the rovers Spirit, Opportunity and Curiosity. So here we are in 2025 and the Trump administration wants to bring back back this telecommunications orbiter. Three companies so far, Blue Origin, Rocket Lab and Lockheed Martin, have announced their own proposals, and this is before any official requests from NASA have been released. These companies are just announcing these on their own accord. Blue's proposal is an evolution of their Blue Ring spacecraft, a space tug which is currently under development. This vehicle features dual rollout solar arrays for electrical power and hybrid electric chemical propulsion, which is efficient enough to expand its Mars transfer window. In terms of the actual communications part, Blue is proposing multiple steerable high-rate links, which will be supplemented with a small number of deployable ultra-high frequency satellites in low Mars orbit. These would provide coverage to quote legacy assets and future missions to the surface. And on top of that, there's over one metric ton of capacity for another payload. They say it'll be able to support a NASA mission by 2028. Rocket Lab's proposal stems from their initial Mars sample return proposal, which already features a Mars telecommunications orbiter before the White House wanted one. Built through their pre-existing in-house supply chain, their selling point is the fact they've already built two Mars satellites, built within three and a half years and on budget for NASA's Escapade mission, which coincidentally is scheduled to launch on the next flight of New Glenn. They've also provided components for the Perseverance rover's crew spacecraft and the little helicopter that could, Ingenuity. Plus, there's the proposal from legacy contractor Lockheed Martin, which also stems from their proposal for a fixed-price Mars sample return mission. Their selling point is similar to Rocket Labs in the fact that they're leaning on their proven track record with Martian orbiters. They built 2001 Mars Odyssey, Maven, and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, all of which are still in service around the Red Planet. And with all of that said, it raises an interesting point, or rather a surprising absence. SpaceX is yet to announce any kind of bid for this government project, even though the company's ultimate mission is to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. However, they do have plans for Mars communications of their own. Back in Elon Musk's May 2025 Starship presentation, it was announced that they plan to deploy a Starlink constellation around Mars, similar to what they have achieved around Earth. In the long term, this would provide internet and communications coverage anywhere on Mars and would also provide a link back to Earth. These two different concepts, a single beefy communications platform versus a fleet of satellites, showcase the different philosophies of exploring Mars. SpaceX was founded to make life multiplanetary, hence why a satellite constellation that covers the whole planet makes perfect sense. On the other hand, the Mars Telecommunications Orbiter is a government project driven by the current administration's desire to land Americans on the surface of Mars. One isn't inherently better than the other. That being said, all of these are still technically proposals, but what do you think? If you had to pick one of the four options discussed in this video, which one would you choose? Let us know down in the comments. I've been Ryan Caton for NSF, thanks for watching and goodbye.